currently in this chapter uh, the problem the major problem is the corporate criminal li- liability does not have a dedicated legislation to curb you know the the different types of corporate frauds because uh, because it is it is a very complex uh, economic fraud that any company can do and that uh, because it does not have a particular legislation to curb it so different legislations comes into picture one such is the competition act 2002 which uh, we will be talking about now so uh, we we will be first seeing how the competition commission of india which is popularly known as cci was established and wo- what are its functions so cci was established to prevent practices having adverse effect on competition then to uh, promote and sustain competition in the market to secure the interests of the consumers and to guarantee the opportunity of freedom of trade in markets in india so uh, the thing is you know uh, competition uh, act came into picture majorly what used to happen earlier is the big enterprises used to uh, you know uh, dominate the market or abuse its dominant position suppose say i'll just give you an example suppose say there are uh, yeah you remember once we had this uh, aditya birla ka grocery shop which was known as more okay that time before more came into picture there were very less uh, you know like this kind of retail grocery shops so they were basically uh, grocery uh, local grocery shops or provisional stores whichever uh, you feel comfortable with and this more uh, came you know as a new invention for this people where the products of like groceries were sold at a very uh, lesser price suppose say a tomato ketchup at the i remember that was that was like when i was a small kid so the tomato ketchup uh, that which was sold at a, a local shop vendor costed you around 125 and the same tomato ketchup you know they used to give it at a discount and the price was nearly uh 89 or 85 to 89 so you can see the profit margin they were keeping for the customers the customers of course they even though the more shop was like a little far they used to go to you know uh, to bring the goods at a lesser price now the uh, the local shops even though they were trying to sell at a lesser price could not sell you know less than you know a particular price so more was keeping a big margin and you know they were actually abusing their dominant position and was keeping predatory pricing predatory pricing again if you want to know more i i am uh, i think i have explained it with the example what is predatory pricing the price that you know eliminates uh, you know other local vendors from the market or say eliminates any other company from the market such is the you know competition uh, kept by this kind of big corporate houses so this happened so you can see if if you take this hypothetical example that i have just stated which is actually not a hypothetical example i would call it a practical example because i have seen it with my own eyes and later you know this was uh, taken up in the local newspapers too at that point of time so uh, what i wanted to say is this kind of uh, competition arises and to curb such a you know such kind of competitions uh, so that it does not eliminate the other uh, people who want to take up business this competition act 2002 was brought into picture also sometimes th- this was particular one retail which was doing this sometimes it happens so that lots of other organizations join their hands together you know b- to to keep up predatory pricing to eliminate uh, suppose say the newcomers in the business uh, profession like say suppose tata reliance infosys they join hands for a particular p- product and they say that we will uh, give the product to the co- vendors or the consumers to suppose say 1 rupees uh, even though they have a uh, uh, they they have a little loss you know uh, and suppose say the other local vendors suppose say um, the local sellers sorry 
the local sellers will be selling a particular product, the same product, I suppose say three or four or five, depending on wh- however they have made the product. So they, there is a considerable difference, you know. So uh, this is how certain group of enterprises join their hands together for the mutual benefit to eliminate the competition of others. So you can see how cartels are formed. This is a small example of cartel. See, I am explaining you in a very simple language because uh, if I use fancy words and legal jargons, it will be very difficult for you all to understand. Uh, Presuming that most of you have not gone through the competition act till now. And if you have gone through the competition act, then I am sure it is very easy for you to understand whatever I am saying. So this had happened uh, uh, during that time and then this is the reason why again as I stated Competition Act 2002 came into picture. It was significantly amended in 2007 and the act wa- is planned to preclude anti-competitive agreements that the one that I was saying talking about the cartels and abuse of dominant position which I have already explained to you uh, a little while earlier by any business endeavor and to regulate competition. The Competition Act 2002 guarantees to be a powerful apparatus for checking corporate fraud in India and is relied upon to fill in as a watchdog for the corporate world. Like like what? Supreme Court is the watchdog of the constitution or you can say guardian of the constitution. In the same way you can say Competition Act is a watchdog for corporate frauds and this kind of thing or corporate world you can say. So, we come to slide 26 where we talk a little more on Competition Act 2002. So, section 43, the act accommodates uh, provision for heavy punishment for non-compliance with the directions uh, of the CCI and the Director General. So, in the section, uh, we see how uh, heavy punishment can be levied and by whom. So, CCI already we have talked about in the earlier slide. Now, let us see what Director General is. So, it is an important arm of the CCI uh, who is appointed by the central government. Now, central government appoints them for the purpose of assisting the commission in conducting, commission matlab yaha pe CCI, uh, assisting the commission in conducting any inquiry into the contraventions of the provisions of the act. So, now it, it just acts as an assistant investigating authority and section 44 and 45 Higher punishments are provided for making false statements or omissions to furnish material information required from any enterprise. So, this is the kind of punishment that is there and section 48 contravention by companies in that case uh, the different uh, elements are being talked, uh, talked about in this particular section and this section basically deals about uh, the company fraud and everything. And for more details on it, you can just google the particular sections and read more on it. In slide number 27, we come to a very interesting part which has been brought by the recent amendment. It deals with competition uh, acts, uh, very uh, recent happening. So uh, here the slide says, with a view to update the Competition Act 2002 and associated regulations, the Indian government constituted the con- competition uh, law review committee so it's clrc on october 2018 now the committee what it did was it submitted its report uh, to the government on 14th august 2019 so just remember which committee bought what it uh, you know you'll get more inform- information as we go on with the next points Based on the recommendations made in the report, the MCA, MCA is the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, which is a body of the government, has introduced a draft competition amendment bill 2020. Now, we will just study the portion that is related to the CCL, which is to overhaul, overhaul the act, that is, that is like to ch- completely change the act. The notification of the government invites comments from the public on the draft bill until 6 March 2020 that happened, you know, uh, which still is like a little, uh, we don't know what is the future of it. So, the draft bill proposes certain significant amendments to the act including imprisonment for non-compliance with directions of the director general. So, imprisonment is basically the major point that is or is going to be introduced 
commitment and settlement procedure in non cartel cases again i had explained cartel like before a lot so commitment and settlement procedure in non cartel cases only in non cartel cases there can be commitment and settlement cases more expedi expeditious like quickly more expeditious combination review process and constitution of a governing body board or body you can say for non adjudicatory function so this is not there but if a governing body for non adjudicatory function is formed then you know there, there will be speedy uh, you know like they, they, this can take care of the other matters and then the you know the, the the cases can speedily be disposed of by the other portion because now everything is done by the cci itself and you know this slows down the entire procedure so this was all about competition act in slide number 28 we'll be talking about indian penal code see indian penal code we have already gone through it so i'll be just uh, you know give a bare reading of the sections that are involved for this uh, corporate criminal liability or the corporate fraud so the first one is forgery which has been defined in section 463 of the ipc and the term for uh, it, it this section particularly defines the term forgery so it refers to making any false documents or false evidence record or part of a document or electronic record with the intention to either cause harm or injury to people to public or to any people so this can be done by a company also in this case and support any claim or title or to make any individual to part with the property or to enter into express or implied contract with intent to commit fraud so the intention is to deceive in this case so even a company can do that to its shareholders or investors or any other party the next uh, section is section 477a falsification of accounts uh, it defines when an employee should be liable of falsification of accounts it suggests that if a person willfully with an aim to defraud either destroys or falsifies any book that is book keeping book i mean where the accounts are maintained electronic record paper writing valuable uh, security or account that belongs to or is in possession of his employer or has been received by him for or behalf of his employer so in this case if you defaults that you will be booked under this section particular section and with uh, number 2 willfully and with the intent to defraud makes or uh, facilitates the making of any false entry in or omits or alters or facilitates the omission or alteration of any material particular from or in any such report he shall be punished for the same under ipc so this are some of the sections that ipc deals with and you can see how a company or a particular employee can be punished we'll now come to the next slide which is slide number 29 Uh, which talks about again the sections of ipc dishonest misappropriation of property so section 403 of the ipc deals with the cases of dishonest misappropriation of property a man commits the offense of dishonest misappropriation of property in the even that he dishonestly misappropriates or converts to his own use any movable property so basically this happens when suppose say the one of the directors has a personal interest and though he you know uh, he gets a property uh, in the company's name he somehow uses it for his own interest and the next section is the section 405 which is criminal breach of trust of the ipc deals with a criminal breach of trust which states that criminal breach of trust happens when an individual who is endowed with any property suppose a individual is being trusted of a property or any territory over property dishonestly misappropriates converts the property to his own use or dishonestly utilizes or disposes of that property in violation of any direction of law or legal contract in this cases what happens is like you know uh, he has been interested with the property suppose a company is interested with the property of suppose say investor shareholder anybody 
you know uh, even shares can be kept uh, with suppose say a, a company who manages the portfolio of a lot of people so in that case if suppose say that person or the company dishonestly misappropriates the the property that he is being entrusted with so in this case he can be booked under this particular section that is section 405 ipc so we come to say uh, slide number 30 which deals with cheating as per section 415 cheating comprises of deceiving any individual and either fraudulently or dishonestly inducing the deceived uh, deceived individual to deliver property to a person or to enable a person to hold property so we say uh, in this section what is it is being said that you know fraud that a person suppose say fraudulently or dishonestly induces another person to deliver a property or you know keep a property in that case uh, the, the intention should be to deceive or uh, to do it dishonestly or fraudulently and B is intentionally inducing the deceived individual to do or to omit to do anything that he would not do a preclude in the event that he were not all that deceived and that causes or is caused damage or harm to the individual in body by reputation or property. So, in the second section, subsection what is being said that intentionally the person or the company suppose say induces the deceived individuals uh, to do something which he should not have done. And, uh, I mean the the way he is deceived, so it causes a damage and harm to the individual in body, mind, and the properties and the reputation. So this, you know, in this way, a company or suppose say the key managerial person of the company can be booked under this particular section. And this were some of the important sections that uh, were required from the Indian Penal Code for booking a person under CCL or a company under CCL or a corporate fraud for that matter. In slide 31, we will be talking about a very interesting act which I am sure most of you are already aware about that is the Prevention of Money Laundry Act 2002 which is also commonly known as PMLA Act. This act particularly deals with most of the economic frauds uh, which are done by a company or say the white collar crimes which are committed by uh, a person or say suppose the directors. So uh, you also have heard about the enforcement directorate and all the me mechanisms which actually we will be doing in uh, the next part of this chapter which deals with the regulatory framework. But this Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002 uh, forms the central part of the legal structure in India to battle against money laundering. So, money laundering currently is one of the crimes that uh, you know is ongoing and you know India is trying to fight with uh, the crime and individual converts, uh, the, the main thing that happens here is individual converts illegal cash into a legitimate possession. So, somehow you know uh, they try to convert all the illegal cash into a legitimate possession in the in the manner that they hold all the money you know in a legal way they try to hold all the money they convert it like black money into white money that kind of a thing. Section 4 of the act endorses punishment for money laundering with rigorous imprisonment for a term of 3 years to 7 years and a fine up to 5 lakh rupees but you know uh, uh, whatever amount you may commit a fraud on like but this this uh, i think if you ask my perspective as your post faculty i would say prevention of money laundering act still cannot do justice to all the frauds that the, which are the ongoing frauds so this is a major uh, problem and a grey area you can say so this is what what has to be dealt with currently now we will be talking about a very interesting legislation which we can say has come up very recently after say the uh, Vijay Malia was the first case where this legislation has come up and then the ne in the need of Modi's case uh, again we have come across this legislation 
विच अगेन मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर ऑलरेडी अवेयर ऑफ बट लेट मी टू से लाइक इन द मॉड्यूल यू फाइंड आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द फ्यूचरटिव इकोनॉमिक ऑफ इन दिस बिल्ड बट यू नो मैन आई रोड दिस मॉड्यूल देन द एक्ट डि नॉट कम इन टू पिक्चर नाउ थ्रू द एक्सप्लेनेशन लेट मी क्लैरिफाई दैट द एक्ट हैज कम इन टू पिक्चर एंड इट इज नोन एज द सेम नेम एज द बिल Fugitive Economic Offenders Act, or in my module it was Bill 2018. Uh, so, in this, I'll just give you a scenario. Like absconding businessman Nirav Modi has been declared a fugitive economic offender under Fugitive Economic Offenders Act. He is the second businessman after Malia to be declared as FEO or fugitive economic offender. Fug- who is a fugitive economic offender it's like uh, you know uh, a person who you know to avoid a arrest you know flees from their own country and take uh, help from other country and the amount that has been defrauded should not be less than 100 crore so this is the this is the this is the uh, what should i say The, the set of people who are called fugitive economic offender so if we go by this uh, second point of this particular slide so fugitive economic offenders act allows for declaring a person as an offender after an arrest warrant has been issued mind you arrest warrant has been issued against the individual and the value of offenses exceed 100 crore you know i just said the point 3 another condition for declaring a person a fugitive economic offender or feo is when an individual refuses to return to the country to face prosecution in the specified cases mm-hmm. if you see the example of nirav modi and malia you will be knowing or understanding this very point very easily as per law a special f EOA that is fugitive economic offenders act court can order the confiscation of FEOs means the fugitive economic offenders properties including those which are benami and the proceeds of the crime in and outside india so this is the basically a uh, new court this is basically talking about a new court that can be formed and how everything works so once properties are confiscated the union government has the right over them and it can dispose they after 90 days so there is a limitation period also imposed on this so uh, if you see uh, the procedure that is being uh, listed in section 4 also i will say you can go through this act because this is basically a very small act so it won't take much of your time if you want to read the entire act so now uh, if we talk about uh, the procedure which is listed in section 4 The first point is the investigating agencies have to file an application in a special court under PMLA Act. So remember this 2002, containing details of the properties to be confiscated and any information about the person's whereabouts. This is so. The next procedure is what? The next process: the special court will issue a notice that can be the PMLA court or the FOEA court or FOEA court, whatever. uh so in this case uh the feoa court or the special court like pmla court will issue a notice for the person to appear, appear at a specified place and date at the 6 weeks from the issue of notice so special court will be issuing a notice for the economic offender or the fugitive economic offender to appear at a specified place and date at least 6 weeks from the issue of the notice so 6 week is the minimum time that is required so the, the, the this is the time period that has to be intimated next process is proceedings will be terminated if the person appears so if the person appears then the proceedings will be terminated and regular proceeding will go and if not the person would be declared as feo as we had already said fugitive economic offender based on the evidence filed by the investigating agencies here dg cci and uh, the fugitive economic offenders act basically has their own special team so they are all the investigating agencies the person who is declared as a fugitive economic offender can challenge the proclamation in the high court 
is to remember they can challenge the proclamation the person the person can challenge the proclamation in the high court within 30 days of such declaration according to the fugitive economic offenders act 2018 so according uh, to the process they need the person can file a declaration you know can take the case forward so in the high court within 30 days so that has to be remembered and this takes us to the to the end of the legislative all the legislative uh, bodies and the acts which you know help us to deal with all this corporate frauds and the white collar crime so in the next portion we will be dealing with the regulatory frameworks because legislative portion is done now for ccl now i'll be talking about the regulatory framework and after that we'll be talking about some of the scams that has uh, you know taken place in india and we'll be studying how it happened and what are the different things so till now i think uh, you're well off with the legislative part please go through them you know if you want to you know ponder over it and you know gain more knowledge then please google the particular sections and the small acts even you can read the entire act because that takes hardly i would say half an hour to read a act like fugitive economic offenders act or pml act so not take much of your time so you can go through that thank you